All right, technician put a call in, needing some help. We're working on some of these contactors and uh, it's triggering an alarm for him for a motor protector. If I understood correctly from talking to him on the phone, he replaced the motor protector because it was triggering. Or what'd you replace? Well, I, I re recently removed that one and put in a new one that I knew was, was good. Right. But this is the one you changed? That's the one that I temporarily switched out of Okay. But we're triggering alarm for a motor protector, right? Compressor trip. Compressor trip. Okay. If I remember correctly, I think it's a thermistor. Uh, we could check it. You got your meter? Yeah, 209 ohms. Okay. So yeah, this is a thermistor. So this motor protector is set to where when it sees the ohms exceed a certain range, it knows it's out of its safety parameter. And it has to see the ohms go um, usually back down. So the hotter it gets, the higher they get, if I remember correctly. Once they reach a certain point, they'll stop or it'll it'll trip out because it sees an over temp. It's got to see those ohms come back below that and then it'll reset itself. With it like this, it would not run. And have you confirmed is this relay closed? So we should be able to read power. It should say, yeah, it should say zero volts across it. Okay, so that relay is not completely closed. This is 88J, I was looking for it on the schematics to try and find this landing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was one of the points where I was at before I got it. Yeah, it really got me wondering if maybe some of these wires got mixed up. I'm with you. 343C, 905B. Yeah, that, that 50 volts, yeah, something's, something's not right with that. We don't have a number. Okay. Multi-circuit compressor module. And this is what you replaced today, right? So that's gonna be 2B18U4. Module compressor protection. I count two of them. A1B. So 89K and 88K are the two we're looking for on that compressor, but that also runs in series with the other motor protector on compressor 2A. Am I looking at that? Yeah, CPM. It's a 228U3. 228 yes so these are running in series with each other so if either of these trip it'll cause that and then we're going through that should be the high pressure looking at the schematic so the 2s 2s3 yeah high pressure cut out for circuit 2 then we have a fuse um, this fuse is 1f45 these auxiliaries, all of this, all of that ties into that one, one alarm. So coming off the board, we're going through these two auxiliaries, which are not pulled in right now. We definitely should not have seen something across those contacts, so I'm really curious about that. Yeah, normally open, normally open, which means right now, so read across these. All right, so that one you're getting 12 on, have you done anything with this one? Mm -hmm. Go from one terminal to ground, please. That auxiliary is not closing. So I would venture to say we could probably jump this. Have you tried manually cycling this? Not no. that one, no. We're going to cycle it. Check it again across. I saw 12 earlier. Still got 12. So that auxiliary is open. So we know it's not tripped. Just for this purposes of the test, you got a wire nut. Let's go ahead, bypass the auxiliary, and uh, let's see if we can get it online. 
Because the readings we saw over there could be justified by this. You're getting like 400 something ohms. You got a, you got bad contacts in that auxiliary. Yeah, it should be zero. We should be able to reset. See if we can do just that one circuit. No, that's gonna reset the whole thing. All right, so that's cycling now. Line, what, 144? Yeah, 144 there on the schematic. You follow that straight across. That takes you through that entire safety circuit. So you've got the two circuit breakers, so the CBs, uh, one CB11 and, and whatnot. This, so those are those two auxiliaries. And then from there, we go through the terminal board, back over to the two uh, motor protectors at the compressors. Then we hit the high pressure switch after that. So basically what we did was when we should have seen that 120 here. When we didn't and I saw that 50, it really stood out as weird to me and I'm still slightly skeptical. When it actually turns on, I'll be less skeptical. But that 50 volts, just something, something's weird, but that's what led us back to here. So I figured, well, before we go back over, let's go ahead and just double check these just to be sure. And just like that, we're running. So I called for circuit one, first stage. We're on circuit two now for second stage. That was our problem. We'll get that auxiliary replaced. This will get us by. That's on the second stage compressor too. So it's gonna it's gonna bring on one B and then two B very last. So you, you, this whole machine would have to 100% load for you to even call that circuit. So I'm not too worried about that. I think that's a, a calculated risk that will be okay, especially as long as they get it fixed today. If they're not going to want to fix it today and they're going to want to leave it for several days or something and want to quote whatever, we, we, we need to, we don't, we can't leave it like this. So basically all I did is I walked up and I identified the specific component we're looking at, right? So our, our initial question was, are these wires right? Are they in the right place, right? I'm just trying to see what does the schematic say is supposed to be going on right here. From there, I started looking at, okay, what else is also in that circuit? I knew we had those 50 volts across that contact, and again, it just, it's something that just wasn't right. So, you know, typically a reading like that would indicate something was tripped somewhere. So all I did, I just started going back and forth of what's where. So I saw these two were tied together, saw the high pressure, and then I also verified, you know, okay, I see these two auxiliary contacts, which we know are those. So my only goal was, the only reason I even suggested checking them is because all of this is over on the other side of the unit. Yeah. Instead of going back and forth since we're here, let's just go ahead and check it while we're here to eliminate that as a possibility, right? And it just so happened, you know, we, we ended up finding it. If we wouldn't have gone that route, the alternative is we would have went and verified all this and then eventually at some point we would have made our way back over here after we took the next hour <laughs> going through each of these wires and verifying the schematic there, right? That's all that I did. I just came back, okay, this is this is where I'm looking right now. This is my problem. Where do we go from here? And to save time, we went there, found it, diagnosed it, got it online. So this ended up being a real good call, real good experience for the technician. You know, he did a really good job. And this problem actually turns out to be intermittent, right? So the original call was that it was tripping and it's been having this trip issue for some time. But the first time he came out here, started looking through it, he found that that contactor was having trouble and the auxiliary on it wasn't uh, releasing properly. And that's what was, um, uh, it was causing the contactor to hang up and it was, it was just causing some weird issues there. Now, when you look at it, it's not tied in through that same safety circuit, but it was it was definitely causing some, some weird issues and it led him to want to replace that contactor and that auxiliary, which he did, and I think he, he did well at. What it boiled down to, though, is once he got that figured out, he, uh, he, was, he was still triggering an alarm to where, like, the other day, he could get it to reset and it would turn back on after he did the contactor. Well, you know, today, it... it it just it wouldn't turn on at all and it wouldn't do it and that's when you know he called me we're talking through it so the auxiliary just wasn't it wasn't closing properly like it was supposed to and that it was doing it intermittently right so obviously 
that was a couple of weeks ago that that contactor and all went down and happened and they approved it and uh then you know today it, it came back in as you know it was tripping out wouldn't turn on you know and he was going through that process he did have the the so the motor protector when we were looking at that at the compressor he had that on his truck uh and he he the one you saw was the one he put back it was not the one he he, he switched them back but he had one on his truck he went ahead and just put that in just to see if that'd make a difference he was also really questioning if the wiring at that motor protector would also okay and that's why he had the the um the the safety relay contacts and the 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 thermistor contacts switched up you know and he was just trying at this point he got to the point where he was really just trying to to cross any uh anything he could just to make sure everything was okay that's this call mtt guys take care of your families and you know just make time for your spouse your kids they really need you we are on the back end of our summer stuff you know it's it's very end of august at the moment right this video is probably going to come out in the next couple of weeks appreciate it guys